my name's James. I'm from Engine Service Design. We are a service design organization who work across the globe, which is kind of cool. So what we want to talk to you about are three of the significant transformations that we're seeing and we're uh, being challenged with on a regular basis with organizations that we work with. And we want to talk about these three transformations in the context of the challenges that our organizations are facing and also have a point of view on the challenges that we as, as service designers need to grapple with as well in terms of how do we continue to help organizations fundamentally change what they're doing. So um, we talked about service design sort of moving outside of the design field. So the idea that um, service design has captured the imaginations of organizations who actually have probably never commissioned design in the past. And actually, it does, uh, it's sort of, it's done this because it sort of straddles, uh, it should straddle the, the kind of realities of a service operation with what we think is delightful experience for the customers, what is better for customers. I think why I've got a pillow fight there is that actually the idea of customer experience is bigger than, is bigger than this room, it's bigger than design. And there's lots of other disciplines getting into the field of service design and customer experience. So increasingly what we're seeing is uh, walking into a room and there's often a person in the corner with a very sharp suit and they're a management consultancy and they say, hey, we do, serve, we do what you guys do, we do customer experience re-engineering. And you kind of go, oh, okay. So all of a sudden we're, we're, now, in a, we're now in a field where actually we're, uh, we're needing to kind of really deliver and substantiate our offer because we're sort of working with organizations who've been around the block, they've done it, they've delivered stuff. So we need to be um, talking about the same thing. So the three transformations that I'm gonna talk about uh, today, uh, first one is a business centricity with a uh, shifting to a customer centricity. And this really uh, focuses on service organizations. So how, are they, how have they got a renewed focus on the customer and what are they doing about it? The second is about product development, uh, moving to services development. So we heard in the Xerox example, you can't just shift to a service organization overnight. The implications of that are huge. Um, so what are the challenges around that? And the third one is really both about service organizations and product organizations, but a shift from sort of anal analytical approaches alone to using imaginative approaches to complement uh, what, they're, what they're currently doing. So, Looking at the first one, the idea of uh, moving, moving towards the customer, a really important thing for us to realize as service designers is that the practice of customer experience is increasingly being seen as a key business practice within organizations. So organizations have mapped out what they think their customer journey is, they've identified what their touch points are, um, and they're measuring the impact of their experience at each individual level. And for the first time, which is amazingly exciting, for the first time, we're able to see the impact of bad experience on key business metrics. And actually, so already, within organizations, they're having conversations about, we can't keep doing this. We can't keep losing customers because it costs us. And so the first step, really, the first step to change as me in a service organization is, do I have a clear picture of what my customer experience is? So is it quantified and is the impact known? The challenge these organizations have, so you know, they hit a cycle. So after a few years of uh, measuring their customer experience, they get to a point where, hang on a second, we've got loads of data. We've got data coming out of our arm armpits. Um, what do we do? What do we do with it? And actually, sometimes what you end up doing is CX or customer experience becomes a damage limitation exercise. You end up fighting fires. You end up just fixing the problems as you've always fixed them. And actually, uh, sitting in a room and going, hey, our customer satisfaction rating's at minus 79, which means we're third in the energy sector. Hooray! And you're saying, well, you know, we need to, we need, we need to help these organizations move forward. And I think where we've experienced service design is uh, having a real impact is it brings the perspective of the customer into the organization. We know that, we've heard about this already, but what it really does is it marries the reality 
of what customers are experiencing with how the business thinks that service is operating, um, how that service is operating. So a key part of what service design can do is identify the bits of the experience that actually matter to the customer and the bits that actually, well, yes, you can improve those, but you know, they don't necessarily have as much impact as you think they do. Another thing is causality. So sometimes you're measuring the effects of something rather than the cause of something. So sometimes getting underneath, um, getting underneath how, the actual, how the actual service operates is key to understanding what to do with it. So lots of organizations, um, when they're going through that next phase, the next phase of change is, do they have a target experience? So are they asking themselves, OK, we ha we ha we've done all this measurement, but so what? How do we, how do we move on? And then how do they build um, a point of view on what to do about it, and then a means of addressing that thing? So increasingly, what we're seeing is we're working with all organizations and customer experience teams to be able to move from the data set that they have through to the so what's and being able to ground the, the kind of big idea and the actual uh, implementation strategy around something that matters to their organization and will affect those key levers that they're measuring through their customer experience. So kind of that's the next level of change. And then bang, they hit another challenge, which is actually, if the organization doesn't believe that the customer experience um, has a tangible, it, it, th there's this kind of paradox. If the organization doesn't believe that uh, improving the customer experience is good for the organization, then that's a challenge. So one of the things that we've increasingly talked to organizations about is a way of measuring success. So we want to affect um, some of the key things. So it might be around unit sales, it might be around profitability, but actually, some of those longer-term wins are equally important. So what we're increasingly talking to uh, these organizations about are how do we build, how do we design in retention into the experience? How do we design in the idea that we're going to have a long-term relationship with these people? The biggest problem that organizations have is they focus on acquisition. All of their cash is at the acquisition phase. And then, ironically, that you have a customer and you think, well, what, am I going to, what do we do with them now? You know, it's kind of like you know, having beautiful inv invites to a party and then having no jelly and ice cream afterwards. Um, and, and the third one is around advocacy. So there's, there's a whole host of loyalty metrics out there, and it's kind of how do we not only just fix the basics and get a very vanilla, vanilla improvement to our service, but how do we raise the bar? How do we turn our customers into advocates? And that actually um, is where service design can really Get, under, get underneath um, and really challenge that organization. So the next phase of change within this context is that the experience is managed. And what we mean by this, and we were talking about it a little bit earlier, is the need to move from the concept through to what delivery looks like. So as a, uh, a sort of um, design discipline, the thing that we should thrive on are the constraints. And the real trick and the real art to this is being able to deliver all of those fantastic experiences within the constraints of the organization. And actually seeing the constraints as opportunities. So actually, we can turn um, you know, a, uh, a bad, a, a, what is a currently an, an awful moment in the experience and sort of turn that on its head. So increasingly, um, we, we believe service design, in order to be effective, needs to be involved in the delivery as much as it can, so all the way through to uh, implementation. And so what we've tried to do with the organizations that we've worked with is try and um, set the parameters around what a quality implementation means from a, from a service design project. And so we talk about three dimensions. We talk about quality. So that's the design quality of the outputs. So we may identify that you know a welcome letter is something really key to X service, but actually it's the qualities of those things that we need to kind of retain within the cycle. So much can get lost within the implementation cycle. We need to be the advocates of design all the way through the process. Performance, so this is performance at a kind of operational level, so the idea that which are the things that we're affecting? Is it easier for frontline staff? Is it much clearer when I'm ringing into the call center why someone's calling in? Can I preempt customer requirements? 
And the last one is impact. So how, how does what we've designed begin to impact on you know, those key metrics like retention, advocacy, et cetera? And also to get deeper across the, the kind of depth of what it is to design a service. So yes, there's the customer experience, and it's great to drive it from that perspective. But what does it mean from the architecture of the service, the components, how do they need to work in terms of the CRM system, uh, the loyalty metric, the, uh, the website, the b behavior training that we need to put into place? And are our propositions valuable? And then all the way through to the organization, which is what we're doing more and more of now, which is if the organization can't sustain that experience beyond the project, then we can't necessarily consider that a success. And the real key for service design is a legacy, a capability legacy, which we'll talk about later. The, the greatest thing to, uh, to convince people of making a change is through impact and impact stories. So a, uh, a project that we did about three years ago from Mercedes-Benz looking at their after-sales service, these are some of the... This is how we reported the success of this um, project back to the organization in order to convince them to roll it out further in Europe. And what we're talking about is, yes, some of those kind of customer measures, like satisfaction's gone up by 50%, that's great, but actually you have some surprising effects, um, like average spend goes up in terms of the after-sales service. And we were seeing sort of uh, fairly unusual uh, things within the retail, within the sales environment. So actually, because of the after-sales service, we were driving sales up of the vehicles. And when you think that Mercedes-Benz makes 80% of their profit from after-sales, you realize how significant some of these things are. So the second transition is the shift from product through to thinking about services. And I think... You know, we, if I'm a product organization, I'm seeing the increasing, increasingly commoditized, uh, my product's getting increasingly commoditized, and actually seeing services as a way to slightly think differently about the, uh, the way that we make money, but also the relationships that we have with our customers. But actually, this change is quite difficult. So some of the projects that we work, work in this space are quite innovative, because it requires not just thinking about products or services as features, but thinking about organizations within organizations. So um, with companies such as uh, uh, Philips, for instance, we were looking at, OK, so how does the commercial model work? What does the supply chain look like? How do we start making money? What's the long tail of, what's the long tail of where we make money? How do we build relationships over time? Because we're used to unit sales. We're used to kind of selling light bulbs and being great at selling light bulbs. But actually, you know, if we get into the lighting solution business and we become a business enterprise, what does that mean? So actually, it becomes a bit less about the experience design within this context and a lot more about how we deliver. And this means the organization building new capabilities. So this is a really shorthand way of kind of how we might you know, have a, have a cross-section through a project of this type. So we talk about the different things that we need to address as part of a service design project. And yes, there's all that stuff around journeys and experiences. Yep, that makes sense. But actually, there's a whole load of operational stuff that we need to engage with, like processes, the people, the products that are involved, so the touch points, all those sorts of things. Something that we call platform requirements, and we call it servi a service platform. So this might be the necessary training, the investment in technology, the improvements that we need to make into the core, the core substance of how we do what we do. And then some of the services marketing stuff that we do at the beginning. And it's amazing the amount of uh, organizations that are looking to change but don't know to what end. So at the top, at the very top, it's about defining where are we supposed to be going and to what end. And actually, sometimes our projects are about um, defining that first and then working down. Sometimes they're about actually starting at the bottom and working upwards. I have a font problem. Um, <laughs> so we can't talk about many of these things because they're all very con uh, uh, confidential. Consumer electronics are really suffering. FMCGs are really suffering with this now. They're probably suffering with it today. Um, but one thing that we can talk about is Coros, Chinese car manufacturer, who we're working with at the moment, we've been working with since 2009, brand new car brand, brand new Chinese car brand, European build quality, but they realized very early on 
that actually the car market is changing. They can't compete as a Chinese brand against the likes of Audi and, and BMW. So where they're going to compete is the idea of the ownership experience, what it means to be a Coros owner. So there's a big technology platform that sits at the base of this. There's a telemetrics in the car. There's uh, technology in the retail spaces. We've uh, specifically trained the people in the retail spaces so it doesn't feel like a, a car experience. It's different. It's completely different. They've had to do it from scratch. They've been going for six years. They don't have any legacy in place. So you can imagine how difficult it is for a product organization with massive legacy. You get loads of factories, loads of manufacturing ability. The shift that product organizations are making is, is quite vast, but we're, we're hopefully working through that with them. And the final one is analytical approaches to manage, uh, imaginative approaches. And I think we've all heard about design thinking, and we all have our own opinions about design thinking. So I'm not going to talk about design thinking. But what I am going to talk about is um, the importance of service design thinking beyond projects, and the idea that actually change is, takes, especially in large organizations, takes a much longer period of time. And I think where we've had some of the biggest successes is where we've had a, a kind of program relationship with, with clients, and actually thinking that that change needs to be choreographed over time. And actually, we need to build an evidence base. We need to build the capabilities internally within that organization to be able to start doing this stuff themselves. And we always talk at Engine about, oh my god, our business model is so flawed. Because success for us is when we're not needed anymore. It's when the organization has got rid of the stabilizers, and they're developing services and experiences and doing all that sort of stuff themselves. So if you've ever received a 1,000 pounds energy bill with a box of chocolates, this is more than likely the process that, that organization has been through. At the beginning of the change, it's often that the organization develops a target operating model. So it's a way that the organization believes that their service should work. And then customer experience is brought in at the end to kind of act as the veneer, kind of make it look nice and make it look pretty. I think increasingly what we're seeing, and the way that we tend to set up our programs of work, is essentially developing something very early, which is about um, the target customer experience and actually run the development of the target operating model at the same time. So each one informs each other. And we have you know, stage gates where we kind of evaluate how is that working, what are the capability constraints, can we test that thing, how does that affect the experience. And actually, in order to kind of, to kind of get through to implementation, we need to think about how we're setting our projects up. How are we engaging with the capabilities of the organization? Have we got a clear idea of the constraints? How are we working with those internally in order to establish um, what we can and can't do. And actually, it's that friction, it's the friction between those two things that has always been the bedrock of design. And without one, then we can't deliver the other one. Because ultimately, the success of service design will uh, live or die based on its outcomes. What we see, what we feel, what we experience. And I think the more that we step up and we realize that actually we need to be fully engaged with how the organization does something, fully integrated, have that inside out, outside in, upside down, roundabout point of view from the start, then we can start making the difference that we've talked about um, over the last few days. And I think a project that we, um, a project that we delivered for Anna Airport, who are like the BAA of uh, the, Port, uh, the Portuguese Airport Authority, they came to us and said, we want to move from an infrastructure organization to a services organization. And they wanted to do it because they were, they were hoping that they, would, uh, they, were a public, um, they were publicly owned and they were going to be pri sold privately. So actually, this was about building their capability as a services brand. So they could show that they were making revenue. They would show that they were the preferred destination of uh, connecting passengers, et cetera. So working with them for uh, almost two and a half years, we were able to kind of revamp a number of their different airports, but actually put the infrastructure in place that they could sustain it themselves. We trained a team during the time that we were there, a services development team, which was three, four, uh, four people, um, which is getting bigger, and their remit's getting bigger, and a services management team within each airport. 
and actually delivering premium services, but also improving the basics, like can we make security less of an intrusive experience? So this I want to leave you with a couple of definitions. Um, this one may not surprise you, right? So the service design is the application of empathic design thinking and practices to business change. We think it genuinely can be, but we also think that actually service design will become an integrated management practice within best-in-class organizations. And I think, you know, if I was to leave you with a question, I would kind of say, well, what does that mean to you? You know, what does that mean to all of us in, a, in, in terms of service organizations? As soon as this becomes an integrated way of doing things, then how do we carry on inventing the value that we're, that we're currently doing today? Thank you.